What is up, everybody? Guy here with Weld.com, one of your Canadian hosts, and I'm here today to talk about how not to make weld. Okay, everybody, you don't have to settle for a shitty looking weld. Can I say shitty? I just did. Okay, small little adjustments can give you big results. So what we want to do today is we want to have a look at some of those common mistakes when MIG welding. We're going to break this up into two categories. One being sort of the physical side of things. You know, that's like your travel speed, your stick out, things like that. And then we're going to look at settings at your voltage and your wire feed speed. Let's get going. Man, I just can't get a hang of this. Oh, what do I do? It's got to be these gloves. Let's get rid of these. Put these Caymans on. Got these brand new wasabi green Cayman gloves. Let's try this out. All right, I got everything I need, all my PPE, including my new Cayman uh, wasabi green MIG and stick gloves. These are awesome. These are super comfortable and uh, so far so good. I'm really enjoying these. Okay, so I've got my T-joints together right now and we're gonna do some welding. All right, we're welding on Miller's Multimatic 255 multi-process machine. We're gonna slap on a spool of some S6 hard wire. All right, let's have a look at what a good weld looks like first. I'm at about 19 volts and just under 300 wire feed speed. That seems to work well. We're on 3 16 plate, and that's what we're gonna be using throughout all these demonstrations. Now, I want you to pay attention to this short circuit transfer and how it's nice and crisp. And it's just kind of, you know, they say it sounds like bacon frying. I don't know about that, but all I know is that it's nice and uniform. I got a nice fluid puddle and I'm staying at the leading edge. I'm doing a little oscillation up and down, but I'm staying at the front end and I'm not letting that puddle get ahead of me. That's a good travel speed right there. I don't have a whole bunch of unwanted spatter. I don't see any porosity or anything like that forming. So we're in good shape. Okay, so we're gonna use this as a benchmark for the rest. Make us fun because once it's set properly, you can put some nice welds down. It's nice and flat. I don't have any undercut. I don't have a whole bunch of unwanted spatter. I've got a little bit of spatter on that top edge, but that's gonna come off nicely with the wire wheel. Very easy, so this is a good weld. Okay, so now that we know what a good weld looks like, let's have a look at some of those physical aspects such as you know your stick out being too long, your travel speed too fast or too slow, and then having dirty material, of course. Okay, so the first item we're gonna have a look at is your stick out. Now remember, the stick out is the measurement from the end of the contact tip to the tip of the wire. So make sure we keep that measurement there and not from, you know, sometimes we go from the nozzle to the end of the wire because that's what we're seeing. Sometimes that tip is recessed inside that nozzle. So keep that in mind. In this example, my stick out is way too far. It's just almost looking like the weld is going in cold. Even though I have the proper settings, it's just kind of sluggish and you can see that I'm getting some cold lap and that eventually I'm going to lose gas coverage and I'm going to get some porosity and it's just going to cause a whole bunch of problems. Okay, our finished product. This looks like a bunch of bird poop. Honestly, I wouldn't want this. This looks like a monkey welded this. But uh, you can see all the spatter. You can see the pinholes in there. You can see the lack of fusion. This is just a whole bunch of nonsense. We don't want this. Okay, let's have a look at this arc shot on the stick out too close. Now you can see my puddle is super fluid. I'm, uh, I've got poor visibility on this. Eventually my nozzle is gonna drag into my puddle. Is what this does when your stick out is too close is that it increases your voltage so that that puddle is fluid and it'll undercut that top edge. Even though this weld doesn't look half bad, you can see that it's oversized and that there's undercut on that top. Now let's cut over to this image. This is a flat bead down a plate. You can see on this point where I was dragging my nozzle and it kind of shows up in the, uh, in the final product here. All right, let's have a look at how that machine behaves now when we have too much wire, how it sounds and what kind of weld it produces. Now you can kind of hear this like spittering and spattering and while I'm welding, it's almost like that wire wants to push my plate away. That's because there's not enough voltage to overcome and melt off that wire. Okay, let's have a look at this arc shot. 
Now you can tell how aggressive this is. Like metal is just flying everywhere. We're left with a whole bunch of spatter. I can tell right now while I'm welding that I'm going to get a whole bunch of lack of fusion. And again, this is just aggressive. That voltage is not high enough to melt off this wire. And this is just going to turn out like bird shit. All right, now let's have a look at what happens when you don't have enough wire. So you can hear this like hissing sound and it's really just lacking short circuit because that wire is sort of wanting to burn back into the tip because the voltage is so high. So when you crank your voltage without enough wire, you're increasing that arc length. So it's causing a whole bunch of extra smoke. And we're going to look at this finished uh, product in a second, but you can see how this is just not, doesn't sound right. Okay, as promised here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of like soot left over and that's because of the extra smoke. There's a bunch of undercut and that that weld is actually concave. The undercut is because there's just not enough wire to fill in that groove. All right, before we move on, this was my honest attempt to start my weld and I hit a chunk of silica and pushed my plate back a little bit. So let's make sure we knock off that silica when we're doing a tie-in or when you're doing multi-pass welds. It's just going to get in your way, it can cause lack of fusion. And as you can see, it can cause you to sort of, you know, push back on your plate and not arc when you need it to. All right, did this next video ever go bad? Like I'm pretty, pretty happy we're done with this one here. Um, it's just super smoky, super dirty. You don't want to be sucking that shit in. No good. Let's have a look. All right, this is me just motoring along and traveling too fast. You can see that the weld is not kind of washing in enough into the plate. It's, it's sort of kind of chasing your, your wire a little bit. And looking at this finished product, you can see that this weld is snaky. There's a bunch of kind of high and low, you know, it looks like, almost looks like there's some cold lap. It's crowned up. All right, this is me uh, taking my time, really traveling too slow here. You can see that my, my wire is actually getting into the puddle. So that's just bad news. That weld is going to freeze and it's not going to penetrate into the root of that weld. So I'm just kind of putting metal on top of that previous metal here. So it's really no good. I'm overheating that plate. I might be left with some undercut. I'm probably going to be left with a bunch of actual cold lap. And that's where that metal sort of just kind of rolls and uh, didn't, didn't fuse into the, to the toes of the weld. All right, now that we're done that physical side of things, let's have a look at settings, which is, you know, your wire feed speed and your voltage. So for the most part, if you're starting out, you don't know what the heck you're doing. You're just gonna go in there. You're gonna set your machine maybe to the manufacturer's recommendation. Maybe you come in and you see that your bead is a little bit too humped up. And is what we wanna do is we increase the voltage because that's gonna flatten out your bead, right? Well, sometimes we do that, we overshoot the mark. And is what happens is you increase the arc length too much which decreases penetration. So I got a prime example here of what happened and that's exactly what somebody did. I got this piece of material here that just slides right off and that's because there was a complete lack of fusion. Now this can actually happen from a number of reasons. You know, you could have too large of a stick out, you could have too much wire, right? You could have too little voltage. So there's a number of reasons and we're gonna look at them right now. Okay, this following example is having too much voltage. This is sort of the same idea as having not enough wire. It's going to get extra smoky. The puddle is going to get very hot. It's going to undercut into that plate. And you're actually going to go into a, a transfer mode called globular. And in this example here, in this arc shot, you can see the little globules sort of dropping off the end of the wire. And that's not really a desirable transfer mode for doing MIG. All right, with that increased arc voltage, that increases your arc length, which in turn, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some lack of fusion in here. That beats really wide. It's, you can see the big smoky mess on it. It's no good. Okay, not having enough voltage is a lot like having too much wire feed speed. And we heard that earlier, but uh, looking at this weld or listening to this weld, you can hear that arc kind of starving for heat. It's just sort of bouncing that wire back, pushing it back on you and kind of struggling to stay lit, struggling to keep a puddle, and you're just left with a big mess. It sounds like crap. All right, folks, before we sign off, let's review a few things here. It's not the machine, it's not the Cayman gloves, it's not the helmet that's gonna make you a better welder. It's the settings, it's how to use that piece of equipment properly, and knowing what to look for whenever something is going wrong, and applying that corrective action. A big part of this, this nozzle right here is shielding gas, and that gas has to come out. If you've got a dirty nozzle, 
If that is obstructed, those little holes are not gonna deliver the proper amount of shielding gas. Your material, make sure you clean that mill scale off. That S wire, that S six wire is designed to weld on slightly rusted material. Improve your chances. Clean that plate, get rid of some of that mill scale. Remember those angles, go back to the, to the beginning and think of those parameters, the travel speed, your angle, your stick out, all that stuff plays a huge part in producing a desirable weld bead. So at the end of the day, practice, don't give up, just keep moving forward. So I hope you like this video. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe myself, Sewing with Fire Welding. Check out that weld app, download it, tell all your friends and family there's a unique thing going on here. We've got tons of videos that are dropping daily. So as always, keep those lenses clean.